Hey everybody, it's John Twalbush from policyviz.com. Seen a lot of conversation on Twitter this week about this particular spiral graph that was shown in the New York Times opinion section on the 6th of January. Thought I'd do a quick little critique of it. I really like it. Why do I really like it? Well, because we have seen this type of graph a million times over the last two years of the COVID pandemic. We've seen these line charts. We've seen area charts. We've seen small multiples. This is from the New York Times as well. You can go in here and you can explore all of this data. You can get it by state, by county. You can get all of this. But here we've got an opinion article, an opinion article from a scientist, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Shaman, talking about his projections of COVID from the Omicron variant. And you can see here, we start at the beginning and we sort of cycle out and you can see, well, what's going on with these, this little red area? Well, that's the, the projections. That's gonna be the confidence bound. As we move, work our way down, if you read through this, he's gonna describe uh, the projections. You get a line chart here. So you actually have both visualizations, but there was a lot of anger, a lot of people getting upset about this spiral graph uh, take a look. This sort of started off the whole thing. Literally no reason to make this graph into a spiral. Got another one here. Is this graph real? Because wow, that is the most unhelpful graph I've ever seen. And I have seen some truly bad graphs in my day. But I think all of these are missing the point of what we are often trying to do with visualizations is to get people's attention and bring them into the visual, right? This is another way to show the data. Um, I thought Nathan Yao put it really well in his in his uh, newsletter from today. He thinks it's fine for two reasons. It's a lead into an opinion piece and it's not trying to replace the, the linear view that we all know. And that linear view, of course, lets us get those exact values and make those specific comparisons where the spiral's really letting us see how this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we move further and further out from the beginning of the, of the pandemic. I put it on a tweet uh, a few hours ago. You know, I, I quite like it. Again, I, I like that it brings me into the, into the op-ed. It's something new, something different. Definitely has caught people's attention. Um, plus, I don't remember people getting all upset about the spiral graph that came out a few years ago. Um, maybe you remember these uh, climate spiral graphs that came out. Um, and of course, now this is animated. It is different. It's animated showing global climate change. Um, you could see it animates. Now, it's a little different here because each circle is a specific year. So that's a little different, but you get this, you know, this really nice view. And of course, uh, I got some response to that. Alyssa Flower, uh, Flowers, who does amazing work at the Washington Post, did, you know, um, uh, point that out to me that the climate spirals are, are slightly different. But again, I like that. And I thought Scott Klein made a really nice uh, comment here that the, lots of people in the field or, or sort of along the outskirts of, of the field, maybe not neck deep in data visualization, uh, think that you should never ever use circles, should never ever use radial charts. But again, sometimes it's about engaging people. And in this particular case, A, it's an op-ed, and B, you get that linear view further on down in, in the visualization. And uh, Antonia, and I'm not gonna try to pronounce your last name because I'm sure I will uh, mess it up, I think hits this right on the head, that the opposition here is to people not understanding that this is really trying to attract people's attention from the general public. And it's not trying to solve the challenge or the or the task that we all have in our minds when we're looking at these visualizations, that we're trying to track specific values, particularly in our own country, or in our own state, in our own county, or in our own region. And here, I think we're just trying to get at this overall story of the change and the variation and look how big that spread is at that Omicron uh, variant here in January of 2022. So again, there is a thread of the data viz world that thinks that we should never use circles. I was used to be a, a, a subscriber to that way of thinking. I no longer am. I think there's a, a usefulness and utility to having visualizations that don't necessarily allow us to make exact comparisons. And this is one of those cases. This enables us to see the data in a different way. It's a visceral way to see the data. And maybe the whole point of this spiral is to get this conversation going that we've been arguing about on Twitter all week, uh, that whether this visual is good and how many more people have read this article because of that conversation. So I don't know how you feel about it. I'd be curious to hear your comments in the notes and the comments below this video or check it out on Twitter and see all the conversations that's going on. There's a really interesting piece uh, from the New York Times in the op-ed section about 
the uh, uh, increase in uh, infections from the Omicron variant uh, to the coronavirus. So this is John Trollers from policyviz.com. Uh, thanks for tuning in.